everybody, I'm Michael Niebuhr, a Galveston Bay Foundation's Habitat Restoration Coordinator, and today we're going to be making our oyster gardens for our volunteer oyster gardening program. The three types of gardens that we make uh, with Galveston Bay Foundation are our oyster shell bags, our oyster stringers, and our oyster cages. So this is how we make our oyster bags for our oyster gardening program. First we start with this aquaculture mesh material. We start with about 30 inches of this material. We put a knot in at one end. And then we take this, the, the shells and we want to put about 20 to 25 shells per garden bag. That gives them a chance to um, all be uniform size um, and give enough room in the bags to grow um, once the new oysters attach. So it's as simple as just opening it up and filling it up with shell. Now I like to leave a little bit of room in there just so it has a little bit of room to, to move around. It's easier when, when you're going to pull them out and check on them. You can kind of shake them around and you can get a better idea on how to look for oysters inside. And then just tie them off. And that's an oyster bag. And now we're going to make our oyster shell stringers. We use this galvanized metal. We have about 22 inches of this material. What we're going to do is first we're just going to kind of crimp off the bottom end so to hold the shells in place. And that's as easy as just twisting the ends with some needle nose pliers. Now the shells we use for these ones have already been pre-drilled by some of our uh, Galveston Bay Foundation volunteers. A tiny little hole right in the middle. Um, and we're just going to slide these on. We do about 20 to 25 shells. And I typically put them all the same direction. Um, it doesn't really matter how you put them on. Uh, different gardeners like to make theirs different ways. It kind of gives it personalized um, how you want. You will notice every shell is different. You can try to put them upside down, right side up. And then once we're done, we're just going to put a little twist at the end. The twist is going to allow us to tie a rope off to it to then hang it from our docks. So once again, I take some pliers, bend it over, and then we're just going to twist it off on the end. And then you can tie your rope off right to it. All right, now I'm going to show you how to make our oyster cages. So oyster cages are going to come already pre-assembled. We're going to have one extra lid that, that we're going to put our shell in. Uh, for this, I typically try to find bigger shells just so we don't lose them through the gaps. Um, and then they fall out into the bay. Once again, though, we still try to put about 20 to 25 shells per uh, cage. Again, that gives it so it's about half full. Once again, we want to have room for you to kind of move it around and see the oyster growth throughout the season. Then it's as simple as closing the lid, putting a couple zip ties on it to hold it shut. We do this once so it'll stay shut, but then you can open it up if you need to, if things get inside it, we will get lots of crabs and things like that. If they get in and, and outgrow the cage, you can easily just cut these off, open it up, let those out, uh, and then close it back up. And there's your oyster cage. All right, so we'll provide the rope. Uh, with the shell stringers, I typically just tie it um, right onto that loop. Make sure the knot's tight, and then when, when you can lower it in and out of the water as much as you want, you never have to worry about that coming loose. The shell cages, I'll typically run it through a couple of the loops and then tie it on so we can hang flat. Uh, you're more than welcome to experiment different directions on hanging it. You can hang it vertical, flat, however you like, as long as you have a good to solid knot, so you're not going to have to worry about it tipping um, or falling out. For the shell bags, I like to tie the knot just below the knot of the mesh material. That way it gives a good solid grip and hold on the bag. When you're ready to put them in the water, I typically will drop it all the way to the bottom and let it touch the bottom so I feel how deep it is. And then I like to pull it up a few feet and then we're ready to tie it off. I will say a couple things a lot of our gardeners like to do, and you're more than welcome to, is experiment with different heights. Put some close to the bottom, pull some up a little bit higher. We want to make sure they're in the tidal zone, but it's okay to be near the top and it's okay to be near the bottom couple things to keep in mind when you're doing it. We don't want it setting on the bottom. That'll get too much sediment and it can cover up our shell. And we don't want it all the way at the very top because then in low tides, 
our gardens will be out of the water a little bit more longer than we're uh, accustomed to. Okay, weekly maintenance. Once a week, we ask you to take those gardens, we're gonna pull them up out of the water and give them a chance to set. This is a good time to look at your gardens. You can expect them. Look for new spat growth. If you see them, be happy to take pictures of them, post them online, show your friends, email them to me if you'd like. We wanna see how your spat's growing as the year goes along. The other thing this allows you to do is to clean off your gardens. You're welcome to take a hose, spray them off. You're not gonna have to worry about the spat breaking loose, so spray off all that sediment, all that algae growth, and give it a better chance for those new algae, or those new oysters to grow and attach throughout the season. Leave those gardens out for about an hour. This is great to allow the sun to kind of cook off some of that algae as well. It'll also give a chance to get all those little critters, crabs, fish and shrimp, a chance to get out of those gardens and swim back into the, into the water. A lot of times I like to use a bucket or bag so you can put them in here and give them a shake. Then you'll be able to see all those critters. Put a little bit of water in there, bring your neighbors, bring your kids, bring your grandkids and look at all the, all the creatures that live in these gardens. Because these gardens, while we're growing oysters, you're also keeping a, a little micro ecosystem and you get to see all those animals that use those oyster gardens and use those oyster reefs for their home. A common problem you guys might uh, come across throughout the season is sometimes these bags will get torn. You'll see they'll get torn up on the barnacles or the oyster shells that are already on the side of your docks or your bulkheads. If that happens, it's not a problem. Grab a couple zip ties. You can quick and easily zip tie that bag back together. And then you don't have to worry about losing any of that shell or ideally, new oyster growth. So once you got a couple on there, make sure that that, that hole's kind of tight and you're ready to hang those back in the water. Thanks and happy oyster gardening.